Pro League totals, including regard, of course, is 166 uh, for wins and 111 for losses. In Pro League 2014, he is 2-2, two and two, and three of those games have been against Zerg. He's won two of those. Yep. He's 2-1. Uh, and one. Looking a little bit uh, stressed out, but it's up against the champion, GSL champion Roro, 141 and 115. This season in Pro League, he's 8 and 1. He's 1 0 versus Terran. He's only dropped a single map in the Zerg versus Zerg this season. Incredible play. Really, really solid player. One of the most consistent Zergs we've had ever since he switched over to StarCraft 2. And uh, looking forward to seeing how he's prepared for this map. This map is not in the WCS pool, it's not on the ladder. It's not in GSL, so it's a Pro League only map. He's probably studied a lot of Terran mech here, just in case Bandy decide to go for that. But he's also probably considered preparing against Bio, because Fantasy has shown a lot of the time, even on a good mech map, he will not do it. So the map is up and loaded. If Roro is able to take this, he will tie up the Series 1-1. If Fantasy does, he's going to take his team into a 2-0 lead. Let's find out which it's going to be in just a moment. The map is out, Boxer. I am Wolf. With me is Brendan, and this is the SPL. Down here in the bottom right in the orange for SK Telecom, the Terran player, it is Fantasy. And of course his opponent is Roro, the top left in the pink. Pink always looks so good with the Zerg. You got it the does. pink on the purple. It's like a fade out of colors from dark to light. I like the uh, the orange as well for Zerg. I do not really like teal or blue. The blue one is the one that gets me the most. I like, like teal and blue for Protoss. Yeah. Well, I just can't tell the difference between blue and purple sometimes. Um, hence why I thought the Facebook uh, was purple and not blue. Uh, but eventually I was able to come to the correct conclusion that it is in fact blue. Well, we see a, a gas cancel here. And he's gonna go ahead and send that drone out to scout. Wants to identify what fancy is doing as soon as he can. Not going to be a proxy here. Looks like it's just going to be standard one barracks opening. Probably with Reaper. Probably with gas. And, uh, you know, for Reaper, of course, gas is necessary. We've seen it a lot on this map, especially with the Reaper. You can just jump up into that main base in many different angles. Get all the scouting information you need. You can harass the queens if you get enough. You can harass at the drones as well as the zerglings. So during down that gas is fantasy. Looks like we're going to see that. Yep. Drone's going to poke here a little bit. Not going to be able to uh, do any heavy damage. Comes in here, sees the gas timing. And even ekes out two extra drones here. I like that choice. You know, when you're going hatch first and you see a gas like this, if you're confident in your micro against the Reaper, you can delay your spawning pool quite significantly just to get that extra drone out because it's going to give you so many more minerals. And you don't need to rush the spawning pool. You don't need to rush the queen out to deal with the Reaper if you have good control. Yep, exactly. This SCV taking that uh, minerals for a second, and now he's going to go back and build another building, Supply Depot. Yep. Again, GG girls here. Looking cute. Drawing signs. They want to know who's the, the best-looking player on SKT. At least it was on the left. There's a uh, SKT commercial here in Korea where it basically says over and over, like, you are handsome, you are handsome, you are handsome, or yeah. good looking, or something to that effect. To be honest, I think it's a pretty weird commercial, but... Yeah, I, I don't really get the the point of it. Like, what does that have to do with phones? But I would never say anything, <laughs> I would never say anything bad about our sponsor. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, I mean, the actor and actress they picked for it are very uh, good looking. Yeah, they are. And uh, maybe that's why they did it. There's a lot of discussion about that in the uh, makeup room, in my makeup room today, actually. Was there? Yeah, you and I have separate makeup rooms for some Interesting. reason. Interesting, in my, in my makeup room, uh, they were talking about whether or not Terran was OP. Well. <laughs> I guess after the matches uh, in the past couple of days, Terran's like That's a kind of a weird now. discussion, but let's see if this Reaper gets caught here. <laughs> he's not gonna get caught. No, he's not. That drone is gonna have to spore it up, I think. No? Does Zergling say no? Gets a Zergling. 
Yeah, I guess actually we'll get two Zerlings, I think. If he targets it. Oh, he didn't target. Shame on you, Reaper. He just wasn't brave enough. He was a quitter, that Reaper. <laughs> he gave up way too fast. We see speed on the way. It's pretty good to have out early, especially with the aliens that it looks like are going to come out here. Yeah, he's mined 108 gas uh, and completely pulled out. So just like a little bit of a late pull out there. Um, usually not a problem, a late pull out, but it will give you eight extra gas. And, uh, you know, from then on, when you go back in, you'll have uh, the gas a little bit faster. But, you know, this is something that actually Fancy didn't scout. And he's going he's going in there to try to see it, but it looks like the Zerlings are a bit embarrassed about it. It's not going to let him see. <laughs> They want to cover it up as soon as possible, that's for sure. Uh, I, I wish he would have gone in the base, though, and uh, possibly gotten the scout on that. We see the starport landing on the tech lab. We're going to see Cloak started first. Yeah, it's more important to get the Cloak first. That way you can uh, have the Cloak by the time your Banshee arrives. Oh! A little bit late on the deny there. Now he's going to tickle the hatchery. Yeah. Remember when they used to have grenades? Yeah, that was a much different time. <laughs> Well, oh. Those ruins are actually going to sneak by here. Yeah, but they're not going to be back at the base to defend. I think he's going to be okay. He has a bunch of queens over here already. Three. Yeah, and with only four Hellions, I don't think he's going to bully his way through. Well, he's going to, actually. Loses a Hellion, and the Reaper comes in as well. With three Hellions and a Reaper, damage can be done. Let's see just how much. The Zerlings actually get in the main base here, so he scouts the, the Banshee. Uh, how much damage is he actually getting done? It looks like a lot. Yeah, already seven drones down. The Zerglings, you see, are getting kills back at Fantasy's base as well, up to four now. Yeah, he's going to sneak his way through. He's going to try to target down some of these drones. Should not get very many of them. One, maybe? Two? Yeah, three? A couple, three. Oh, they're all stacked! But they were all at full health, so it was okay. That Banshee's, like, having a midlife crisis. Not sure whether she wants to attack or defend. Going to turn around now to attack. Obviously the right choice here. Cloak is going to finish. Cloak is uh, going to allow him to dance around the spore crawlers. I don't think we actually have spores. Now they're being started a, a bit late here, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't see any spores when he went in for the attack. So the Cloak here is actually going to start doing a bunch of damage before the spore gets down. Yeah, this is, I think, the reason why he waited um, with the Banshee before he showed it, just in case his early didn't really pick up on the Cloak. And now the spores are just so late. He wasn't able to do damage before the cloak was. I mean, if the cloak, if he went in before cloak was ready, there's enough queens to push this back. But with cloak, he does so much, and now he's going to just skirt around the spore crawler. You're going to start picking off the edge drones. He's gotten seven kills, eight kills on this banshee alone. The second banshee's flying into the third base right now, and two banshees together can one shot a drone. Needs to be careful with that though. Yeah, pulls it away, but does a bunch of damage to that one banshee. So they are going to have to back off. Already a bunch of damage, though, going down. 18 drones killed so far by all the harass in total out of Fantasy. So doing a decent job of this so far. Ooh, got to be careful. That Queenie is not pulling it back. One more shot will do it. Goodbye, Queenie. So sorry. And now he's actually going to come over here and maybe try to pick up one of these drones on the edge. It's going to be tough. Overlord will get down here as well. Just the tempo that Fantasy has set in this game is incredible. He's only... You know, eight harvesters down right now. And he's got a third command center completing right now. Yeah, he's he's forced Roro to remake a ton of drones, which is going to really cut down his army supply a little bit here. Oh, we have a gen... Like, is this like a generic brigade that's coming in here? What is this? There's Whoa. so many people just came what out of the studio. What the hell? <laughs> I, think I, I hope we get a shot of this for you guys later on. But that, I, I think it's like a bunch of generic flight attendants. Their, their match is later, of course, but uh, wow. <laughs> that like startled me. I looked up and a bunch of people were in the same uniform were there. It was scary. Um, wow. So that'll be a little later on. <laughs> Back to this game. Um, Third base is going to be dropped down here at the third base. Yes. Uh, for fantasy. Makes sense, you know? Yeah. As You're you not going to expect. drop your fourth base at your third base. You don't want to do that. Well, Brendan, I mean, let's let's look at this. The supply right now is in favor of fantasy and a TVZ because of all the damage he's done. He's forcing more overlords to be produced, which means more larva loss, plus the fact that he's going to have to spend the minerals on that. These Zerlings not getting anything done. They're spotted, most importantly. They will catch some reinforcements. Nice lift up there on the depots, not letting anything by. Yeah, a but ton of depots over there, and those Hellions actually were getting started on those Queens with Marines coming across the map with Stim right now. Going to start clearing up the creep, and there's not much here so far for Roro, but except, you know, five Queens. Yeah, 
And here we go. Those queens over here trying to do work on Transfusion, but the marine damage output is way too much with the Hellion support here as well. Can he hold this off with good transfuses? Looks like he very well may. I feel like the targeting of the Hellions was a little bit lackluster there. Yeah. But a uh, nice hold here. 1-1 one, one wasn't finished either during the attack. I think he was kind of banking on that a little bit. I think he decided to go in when he saw the Zerlings were out of position, and he thought, well, I can go in without 1-1 one, one here. It should still be fine, but not the case. That Widow Mine! Ouch. Going to take out a bunch of those Zerglings, and they're going to try to come over here. They get nothing, actually. Throwing away some Zerglings is Roro. That Viking doing work. Three kills here. Oh, look at this. Just a small group of Marines coming in here, taking out one Queen, and now going to be able to boost away in those medevacs. Another nice pickoff out of Fantasy. He's been very scrappy this whole game. A bunch of early harassment, then the Banshees coming in, and now with the Marines. Very, very good so far. Yeah. Well, five meters on the way. It's going to help deal with drop play. Combat shields are finished now. Doesn't start plus two armor. Although he does have the resources for it, so he's definitely going to want to realize that. That's going to be into that Viking. And Brennan, how long have we actually had the Korean um, StarCraft 2 client? I actually have no idea. Is it today the first day, or have we had this for a while? I think, actually, we've had this the whole time. Oh, okay. I just actually never noticed that. Yeah, it's I just funny. noticed for the first time right now. Interesting. Well, but uh, <laughs> I just wanted to point that out, because just, I just noticed it. Uh... Well, here we go. The Zerlings are actually going to come over here and do some damage. Well, at well, least consider it. <laughs> they, they wanted to, but they... And now they're trapped. Oh, That's ouch. unfortunate. Yeah, it's going to force some of the Marines back, which is going to, again, further buy time for Roro. Try to get more Overlords out. In fact, he was a bit low on those. More Tumors being taken out, meanwhile, by just one scan. These Marines are a small count of Marines, but enough to do a lot of damage. In fact, he's going to try to get this Hatchery. I don't think he will. He needs a pickup. Picks up without losing anything. He's going to be able to get over here island to the island and drop to save those uh, medevacs from the or the medevac and the marines from the views. Yeah, nicely done. Meanwhile, he's multitasking quite well over here. Clears up even further the creep spread. A few tumors do escape detection in the middle of the map, but they're going to be a bit isolated out there. Yeah. Fantasy is just doing a great job of clearing this creep. Roro is a, is a Zerg. Like, you guys see all those tumors being queued up there. He's a guy who wants the creep, especially on this map, all the way to the base of the Terran. But Fantasy is just saying, nah, -uh, not today. I mean, look at the supply again. It's heavily in favor of Fantasy. He's got the better cast bank, funny as it is, uh, and did finally start that plus two armor. Painlings could be targeted here by the Banshee, and he starts to do so. And that really hurts. And uh, a few Marines actually coming for a little cutoff path here. I don't know. This is terrible for Roro. He's losing way too much here. And Fantasy's just got way too much tempo with this. He's, he's so far ahead. 30 army supply up right now. His upgrades are getting close to completion. His plus two attack just finished. And he's going to be a whole set of upgrades behind Roro for a little while here. This counter attack could be what brings Fantasy back. He is spotted. Yeah. Fantasy doing really nice splitting over there at that other battle, and now Roro trying to come in here, but he's like, oh wow, that Terran army is huge. Fantasy now trying to add in some of those Hellbats to try to take down those Zerglings very, very fast. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players try to add Hellbats in to help deal with that. Um, I think a bigger concern for him might be the Widow Mines, but I guess with the Marauders, he's now also adding into the mix. I guess he's just going to feel comfortable with, with these Hellbats here for now, as long as the Banelings don't really connect there. Good spore crawler coverage here by Roar, and no splitting on this army until it's too late. Loses a lot of Marines, and how much damage can he actually get done here? Mutas and the spore crawler say absolutely none. Yeah, basically no damage there except some damage on that one spore crawler. But Fantasy is having the bulk of his push up here at the north. He's going to try to drop in here at this fourth base at the same time. Yep. One thing he does not have in his composition is any siege tanks. No, none at all. Uh, which is why we talked about how this map could be great for Mech. Imagine if he had two siege tanks on the low ground here, how much that would actually help him out. Um, but as it is, he's of course committing more so to the Thors. Thors doing work on those Banelings, and uh, any Mutalists that get too close are taking some heavy damage as well. Even without siege tanks, it's a very difficult position for him to actually engage. He just keeps lifting up the Marines and the Medivacs. The Mutalists try to chase, the Thor does damage. So it's kind of like an air siege tank in a way right now. This is a huge bailing counterattack right now. This is true style over here. See how much damage he can actually get done. Meanwhile, this hatchery itself is getting pretty low. Yeah, he's starting to really chip at that hatchery here. But look at this. The Banelings are going to roll in. What are they going to get? A lot of them exploding on a bunch of Marines here. Uh, trying to get a bunch of SUVs. Oh, my God. He does finally connect with a lot of those there. Put the SUV count down to 57. 
but still the attack is on over here and he's getting so much damage done. He's killing a lot of those Mutalists and 3-3 is getting closer and closer to done. Not even yet started for Roar, of course, because his Hive isn't ready. Plus two attacks for those Mutalists getting closer on the other hand, but I mean, the, the position here for, for Fantasy is excellent. Finally going to actually kill those rocks, which means his earlings actually can't come and punish him on the low ground. He's just going to use a few Mirrors on the high ground. Continued scans here by Fantasy to identify where the rest of the Bailings are, where the Mulas are. And now he's just going to start targeting this hatch on. The hatch is already low as it is, and the Bailings connect here. That's not a good trade. No, it's not good at all. Fantasy is just forcing Roar into these bad trades. Now he's going to drop a Hellbat in here as well. But look at this, Roar going for the counterattack. Blue Flame now on the Hellbat is going to do a ton of damage to all the Zerglings. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed. The lift on the Command Center here. This time he's going to save most of his SCVs. Does he have enough to deal with the Mutalists, though? It looks like he does not. At least not yet. Center Tower goes down. He's going to kill all of these SCVs. And this is one way that Roar could try to claw his way back into the game. Meanwhile, no micro on those units on the high ground, so they will go down with this push. Likely to kill the third base as the Banelings that are morphing are not yet ready. And so many of those Banelings he used in the attack got traded, so they're not here for the defense. 3 3 is started for Roro now, but just in time for plus 3 armor to finish to join the plus 3 attack of Fantasy. He's way ahead in upgrades now. And he can just walk home with the damage he's done. He's even going to try to target the sound of Mars. I think he might be able to get this. Yeah, I think he should be able to get it as well. He started another uh, command center at the fourth base as well as getting another one down at his third base. So it seems like he's stabilized back at home. Roar, on the other hand, trying to get another base over here to the west. He definitely needs to get that base up. He's got a delay here as well. Try to get that 3-3. He definitely is going to need it against these super heavily upgraded Terran units. Uh, I'm, I'm really feeling... Uh worried for Roro right now. He just, he lost too much. His counterattack that hit a lot of the SCVs was one thing, but it still cost him a lot of gas to do that. And his next wave just didn't accomplish very much. He's killing some SCVs here, but not enough. And this counterattack could be good. He's going to force a lift. How many SCVs is he going to get? Well, there's only four over there, so he's going to not get much, it seems. Going to have to back off here, it looks like. Yeah, it's tough for a Zerg player to actually get damage done with Zerglings alone at this type of situation. Good splitting here again against the Banelings, and he cannot afford to be losing these right now. The Hellbats, if they get some good connects, oh wow, even Burrows will try to escape. And, uh, I mean, what's he going to do here? He could detonate, but he's going to get Thor's, not ideal. Marines here actually busily attacking Rock Towers, not attacking the Mules until it was too late, but with the 3 3 upgrades, he's going to trade decently here. He does kill the towers, so the Zerglings can't get in. And this should buy him enough time to defend. He's going to split his units over here. One goes to the drop at the 9 o'clock. Looks like the rest of them are going to have to go back to defend these SCVs. He's losing a lot here, actually, at his fourth base. Yeah, he's like losing so much. And here at the third base, he's forced to lift again. I mean, fantasy pushes are always very, very strong, but Roro is really good on the counterattacks. Now, this base is heavily fortified over here with a lot of static defenses. He's got Banelings there as well. But I feel like Fancy might just go and try to end the game right now. He's killed so much here. He could scan and kill these drones. I don't think he realizes they're there. But the Baneling count is not high enough just yet to defend this, I feel. And, I mean, he's got an army that's right now almost double the size of Roros. With probably still the better upgrades, at least if not... At least not he's even in upgrades if he's not ahead still. Uh... Even Roro's army is not good enough to fight half of the army of Fantasy here as it's split up or a third. Because he's got his army in three different locations right now. This group of Zerlings goes down for free. And look at all of those mules just now dropped on those minerals. It's very well guarded and Fantasy is going to explode with this. Going to get a ton of reinforcements here. Increases lead in army. And I don't know, it's not looking too good for Roro. He lost that fourth base at the west. He, he got his third base up and running again, but... There's only so much you can do when you start to lose your army supply. Yeah. And he sets up a trap here on the line of sight blocker that may or may not be noticed. When you're behind like this, you make desperation moves. Oh, eating a lot of shots on that Thor, though. Hellbat scan here. He just barely gets vision of those Banelings. I don't know if he realizes. Yeah, he does. Second scan goes down just to be safe. And enough turrets here to repel this with all those repairing SCVs and mules. This could be the nail in the coffin here for, for Roro. He's now sending a huge counterattack force over. This one may be too much. Uh, he's, he's able to get through with a few of those units, but this base is going to go down. How much damage can the Zerlings get done? That's a really important question. The mules here, there's so many of them, and that's going to cost them a lot of temporary mining. There's so many Banelings, but the connects. I don't think they're good enough. Good splitting here by Fantasy. Now he's going to go through and try to push down the rest of these Mutalists. 
Oh, he's going to catch the drones as well, Brendan. Oh, this is getting worse and worse all the time right now for Roro. Does he have enough Zerlings here to, to support? I don't think so with the Hellbats no. here. The Thor's at the back. GG. That's it. Roro goes down. Fantasy takes game two here for SK Telecom. Just goes to show what a lot of time and practice can do for you when you're only focused on the team league and you're not playing a lot of televised matches. It's a little bit tougher for your opponents to prepare for you. Roro preparing for so many different team matches as well as the individual league. And uh, I think that might take its toll. Fantasy plays a pretty aggressive style and those Hellion run bys in the early game mess with his tempo quite a bit and you know, I didn't think he was going to be able to actually get by those queens, but if you get by, you're going to do damage. And uh, even you don't have a wall set up, you don't have any spine crawlers up, this is what happens. So Roro cut a corner, and Fantasy was able to get that edge as a result, so... Yeah, and that, that may have been something that Fantasy noticed through watching the replays of Roro. You know, Roro is a Zerg. If you give him enough time, he's going to have an incredible late game. That's what he's known for. And Fantasy just said right from the get-go, I'm going to be very aggressive, very chippy, try to take out as much of your economy early on, get into your head, force you to multiply.